Well, I watched the movie uh, yesterday. I thought it was fantastic. And I thought both you and um, Keely were just wonderful. <laughs> as expected. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I was I wanted to ask, I mean, we know there's, there, we have a lot of information out there about Roald Dahl and about his kind of life. But I just wondered about how much of his life and about his experience regarding Olivia is there. Was there many interviews or memoirs for you to, to work off to really understand what he, what he went through during that time? Well, very interestingly, there was a, 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 a after his after he'd passed away, uh, there was a a document discovered in his uh, one of his drawers, which was a very terse, not terse as, as in tone, but just a very sort of an brief note he wrote about the journey to hospital, mm. and the experience of her passing away, and it was almost like a, it was like it was taken in note form, but it was clearly a if not contemporary contemporaneous, it was a. You know, it was a reflection, but it was it was wasn't written in 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 a sort of long, uh, you know, lucid prose. It was just these little notes about you know, ambulance came, went wrong way, rain on road, you know, that sort of thing. Um, she's cold. Why why is she cold? I ask. And 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 in a way, that was probably the most powerful document that I I read about it. And 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 the fact that it was not published or used in in any way publicly, um, or shared in any way that I could tell um was particularly poignant and perhaps ex go some way to explaining this this way in which he completely shut down from 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 so many accounts that he just didn't function in the way that Roald Dahl had functioned before uh, for a long period after her death and really Patricia was the one who had to be mum and dad and and family uh you know hold the family together over that period so and then I think again equally poignantly you know, when there had been a, a, a lull in the vaccination take up for measles, uh, he wrote a, a paragraph or two, only a short piece, saying, my daughter died of measles because there was no vaccine or credible vaccine or appropriate vaccine at the time. And uh, if there had been a vaccine, my daughter would still be alive. Please take the vaccine. Um, and so he and Patricia were very passionate advocates of, of, of the vaccination programme. And uh, so those really, those two... Uh, uh, those are the two markers, really, for me, that that uh, reflect his uh, what he did actually write about, it. and he, he he spoke about it in interviews, um, but he obviously you know much more dispassionately and professionally, if you like, in a public arena, um, and uh, it's really in the bio in you know, a couple of biographies, and, and particularly the one that uh, we based the film on, which is the one about uh, one of uh, Patricia's, that you really get an insight into the way the family. Um, suffered and 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 actually navigated and came through stronger for it. Because as an actor, it's your job to embody and really get into the emotional headspace of the character that you're you're playing in a movie or a TV show. But when it comes to something like this and a kind of theme of this nature, which is so hard for us to kind of comprehend, the hardest thing for anyone to comprehend, do you almost have to keep a little bit of a distance and a disconnect between yourself and what happened? Because I guess it would be quite emotionally overwhelming if you really did give yourself 100% fully uh, to that emotional kind of landscape. Well, I think um, yes and no. I mean, I think uh, you're, you're right. The distance thing, it, it was there in terms of, you know, not taking it home with me or anything like that. But but uh, one had to immerse in, in it totally. And I and it wasn't that difficult for anyone who's navigated grief. And I've had a few experiences in, in recent years and um, but I've not had the, uh, the, you know, the unimaginably painful experience of losing a child, thank goodness. And, and my heart goes out eternally to those who have had to cope with that. But those who have navigated grief, and, and that's, you know, all of us at some point will, if we haven't already, um, we, there are stages in, in, in that journey. Um, you, you know, the, some, sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's denial, sometimes it's uh, a sort of bargaining with yourself, if only I'd done this, or if you let me have, you know, that person back for five minutes, I promise I'll do this. All those things that are just a confusion of, of emotions and the way that those waves of emotion crash on the shore one day and then and then seem to just ebb gently. Um, or, you know, it's, it's, they're so confusing. Grief is incredibly confusing. And so I, I understood that completely. And and Keely and I were able to tap into that because it was it's so I think very well charted in this in the script and it's very well placed with great uh, honesty and also this thing that you know you are dealing with a character who was complicated in in himself and their marriage was um, a delicate balance in itself um, you know she'd 
she'd married him while still being in love with Gary Cooper, with whom she'd had an affair, the American film star. And uh, so there were complications in this marriage. And, and in grief, you can say some really nasty things to people you love very, very much. And so there's an ugliness there. And, and, you, and, and I think even through that ugliness, you care about these people and you want them to be OK because you know that they're going through hell. Um, so I'm not really selling this movie very well because it's making it sound like it's <laughs> deeply relentingly, unrelentingly depressing. It's not because actually through this journey, they do find a positive um, and, and, and in their case, it comes out with great creativity, um, you know, with the. Um, I mean, the timeline we've, we've inevitably played with a bit in, in terms of uh, the structure of it. But but the point being that through this pain, they do, you know, the, there is the great Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And there is the, the film with uh, Paul Newman that led to her winning an Oscar. Um, and uh, and they are a, a, at the end, a united team, um, certainly for the passage of our of our story. Yeah, and I mean, you obviously have some you have big scenes and, and you, you need to be blessed in many ways of a, a good co-star. You couldn't have asked for someone better than Keely Hawes in this instance. She is one of the one of the greatest sort of actresses working today, isn't she? It must have made your life so much easier. So good to have that element of trust that you just knew she was always going to bring her A game every day. Well, completely. She's also one of the busiest actors on the on the planet. And uh, so we were immensely grateful to her for um, fitting us into her busy schedule, as they say. Um, but uh, no, when you've got someone who is, uh, well, A, I mean, her physical similarity to to uh, Patricia Neal was an absolute godsend. I mean, it's, it's uncanny when you when you you know look at the photograph of Patricia and then and Keely in the role. It's wonderful. Um, but no, with an actress of her range and her caliber, um, you know, working on those scenes. And when you've got a script that's as well, as I say, as well charted and put together and deftly written um, and a producer director who's as sensitive as John Hay is um, really those those scenes that which, which did, did did call on on us to you know um, you know either either get into ugly tear zone or uh, or ugliness with each other or indeed you know that 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 sense of levity that sometimes comes in these these dark passages these dark corners of, of, of a journey like that um, uh, the, the, you know, it was it was a real privilege and, and a joy to play to play those. Joy is not quite the right word, but um, you know, it was um, it was an ex it was a very positive experience knowing that ultimately the story is a is a good is a good positive tale of uh, of how to of not how to. It's not a roadmap, but it's a you know it's an example of navigating this pain. And one thing that really sort of struck me, and I'm sure it's it's something we all know already, but Roald Dahl's sort of that catalogue of, of work is um, it's incredible isn't it I can't quite believe that many stories came out of his head I just wondered about your relationship with, with his work having now played him has that changed at all do you feel a kind of more of a closeness to him and his his prose now that you've uh, had you know, got into his head and, and embodied him on screen um, I think it probably has I mean I've uh, you know I've I didn't read the books a lot as a kid I have to say in my teenage years I I really got into the short stories uh, because I found them sort of dangerous and interesting and, you know, nicely twisted. Um, and then on, on telly in the, you know, back in, back in the day, there was the tales of the unexpected and all that sort of thing. Um, and so that, that, and then knowing more about his hinterland, a bit more about his hinterland, um, obviously that informs your, your understanding of where the stories came from and, uh, um, and, and, the, and, and the sort of, the dark edge of his imagination is very interesting. And I, I am, I actually, I bought, I bought a, 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 a little box set the other day so I can go back and, and, and read the, or, or the, the great standards all over again. And, um, uh, and, uh, and, and with that bit more of information in, in mind, but, but at the same time, the stories stand alone and uh, they, they stand up brilliantly and have encouraged the main thing is they've encouraged millions of kids to read and, um, and take the mick out of grown ups. So my, my final question, and I'm sure you've, uh, <laughs> you're probably thinking the same because there's a sort of, sort of ambiguity about it, but we all, this year has been such a tough year and what we all really want to know and want to see is another Paddington movie. Uh, <laughs> is I mean, there's been talk of a Paddington 3, because I mean, Paddington 2, just to say, is one of, I honestly think it might be one of the greatest films ever made. I genuinely think that. It's, it makes me cry so much every time and I'm desperate for a third. Have there been any conversations or do you know? Because I mean, they're, they're, yeah, there's been talk of a third, but we still don't have a huge amount of info yet yeah no we don't i haven't seen a script or anything like that but uh, uh there's certainly been convers those conversations have been had and uh i did run into david Heyman, the producer last year and he said yeah no we're absolutely trying to you know uh put something together he said but um we're not going to make it unless it's as good as the first two or the script is as good as the first two 
which I think is the, the mark of a great producer because he's not just saying, yeah, well, let's make a third one and cash in and get the dosh uh, off, of those, off those stupid audiences. Uh, he's saying, no, the audiences and Michael Bond's memory and indeed the uh, star of the film, Paddington, deserve um, as good an outing as they did on the first two. So it would be lovely to think that one day we could make a third, but uh, it's uh, it's not going to be that soon. And let's say the sooner we get this bug out of the way, then uh, then maybe we can crack on. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Hugh, and best of luck with the release. And, and hopefully I'll speak to you for Paddington 3 a couple of years later. Uh, <laughs> Cheers, Stefan. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.